Hey guys, right now we're doing a real quick review or intro to the four main groups of organic compounds that we're going to study in biology. So remember, when you hear the word organic in biology, I don't want you thinking of organic foods or foods raised without pesticides, um, like at Whole Foods or something. That is not what we're talking about when we say organic in biology. In biology, organic just means containing carbon. So these are going to be the four main categories of molecules that contain carbon that we're going to study this year. And these are the four main groups of molecules that'll make up all the important parts of our cells uh, and in our bodies. So the first one or the first category is carbohydrates. The next is going to be protein. The next will be lipids. And then finally, nucleic acids. So let's talk about an example of each one of these. Now, all four of these categories all contain carbon. So when we look at their molecular structure, we're going to see the letter C representing that carbon atom or carbon atoms within these molecules. Now, they all make up different parts of our cells. For example, our carbohydrates will have an important role in giving us cellular energy. The proteins are going to be doing all the jobs of the cells. They're going to be making other molecules or breaking them down or providing structural support. Our lipids are going to be doing things like providing the structure of the membrane of our cells. And nucleic acid, acids are going to be providing the genetic information in all of our cells. So all of these have a really important role in our bodies at the cellular level and throughout all of the uh, parts of our organism. Now carbohydrates will have this structure here. You see there's the C I was talking about. And some common carbohydrates that you might think of when you think of carbs as far as nutrition goes would be things like starches and rice and sugars. Um, but carbohydrates are going to be really important when we get down to making the energy for the cell. So our simple carbohydrates like glucose are going to be used in cellular respiration, which is the process by which the cells get energy. Now proteins we can think of the source of those might be something like an egg or meat or fish or peanut butter. All of these are ways our body can get protein, but we actually use protein throughout our cells and we use DNA as the instructions for how to make these proteins. And we'll be studying that later on in the year as well. Now, proteins also um, are going to include a special group called enzymes. Now, enzymes are just a special type of proteins that will have a very specific role in the cell. Sometimes we call them molecular scissors, and they'll break down other compounds. But we'll talk more about enzymes in another video. Next, we have lipids. A good source of lipids would be fats and oils. Now, think of things that are fatty foods. These would be good sources of lipids in your body. Um, and these are going to make up things like the cell membrane. So surrounding all of our cells is what we call a phospholipid bilayer. And you heard the word lipid in that. So each of the phospholipids is going to be a molecule with a special phosphate head and then two little lipid tails. And then we're going to line them up, and they'll be double all the way around the cell. So that's really important jobs. Every single one of our cells is surrounded by this double layer of phospholipids. And finally, nucleic acids. These are what make up our DNA. So our genetic information are made from nucleic acids, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, to be exact. All right, so later on we'll be doing activities in class involving all of these organic compounds, but this was just a brief introduction.